Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I present to you Midnight Dust. The things we'll need to create our Midnight Dust is some powdered non-dairy creamer. Now you could also use a really fine flour, you could use a hot cocoa mix, anything like that that is a very fine powder will work um, to give a similar effect on the fire. But I do know in the show they actually used non-dairy coffee creamer, so that is what we are going to use. So then that way we have the closest resemblance to the actual prop used on the show. Now I know they also added glitter to theirs. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So I have some iridescent glow-in-the-dark glitter, champagne glitter, and black iridescent glitter. Then we're gonna be showing our midnight dust in two different forms. One in the traditional bag that they showed on the show. So that is why I have some brown pleather here. You could also use real leather. And I felt like I wanted to show an option if you don't have a sewing machine or if you feel like your sewing machine wouldn't go through the fabric, which if you do decide to use a sewing machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get a heavy duty leather needle. Um, it'll be a little bit bigger and a little bit sharper. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct needle before you try to just sew this on your sewing machine. But I'm gonna show you an option of how to do it with hot glue. Now, I'm not gonna just use any hot glue. I'm gonna use the Gorilla Glue Super Tough all temperature hot glue sticks. They are really durable, they'll hold up outside. It takes 45 seconds for it to actually cool, so you've got a little bit of working time there. It's safe for indoors and outdoors. It is an amazing product. I promise you, you will not go wrong. And I'm also gonna be using the Gorilla Glue hot glue gun for it. This is not sponsored, just know that I have tested this and I tested a couple other durable sticks and just know that the Gorilla Glue one definitely beat out the competition. Now to finish up the bag, we are going to use some eyelets like they had on their bag in the show. So I have some of the eyelets and the eyelet maker, and then you're gonna need to use a hammer with that as well. Then we're going to use some cording to be able to tie up our bag. And then I have two different glass containers here. I feel like both of these would be relevant to the type of glass container they would potentially have used for the midnight dust or would have picked the midnight dust up in before they put it in the bag. So I wanted to go with one that has a hinge top and one that has a cork top. I'm also gonna use some black and leather cording. We're also gonna need some scissors, as well as a label for our jar printed on sticker paper. And the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win one of my potion bottles? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion giveaway. But for the months of June, July, and August, I'm also doing a second giveaway just for my patrons. So if you would like a chance to win one or both of these prizes, then consider supporting me over on Patreon. Link is in the description down below. So before we create our Midnight Dust bag, I wanna show you how to create the jars. So I felt like they would have picked up the Midnight Dust from a proprietor, maybe CNCC Apothecary even, and it would probably come in a glass container, and then they would dump it into their bag. So I wanted to show a glass container that even if someone was to use it right out of the container, it would be usable. So both of these have a wide enough neck that you'd be able to grab a handful of the midnight dust and throw it right on your fire. But I also felt like it was a good size for it to be dumped into the bag. So again, I just wanted a jar that was going to give the effect we're going for and at the same time also be usable and be cool looking on a shelf. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we're going to mix up our midnight dust. And like I said, in the show, it was just the non-dairy creamer and then it was glitter. So instead of just doing a clear glitter where you would just see a little bit of sparkle, I wanted to add a little bit of dimension with the black iridescent and the champagne colored glitter. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and mix all three of those. Now I picked this non-dairy creamer up at Meyer, but any local grocery store you should be able to get it pretty inexpensively. I know the Dollar Tree does carry it, but it was like in six ounce increments and it was $1.25, whereas this was like $2.50 or $2.99 for 16 ounces. So it was actually a slightly better value. So that's why I went ahead and got the bigger containers at Meyer. And um, I picked both of these jars up at Hobby Lobby. So um, just keep your eyes peeled. They're good in the canister section, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to dump our non-dairy creamer in here. And because this is such a big jar, I don't want it to be so hard when we're mixing things up. So we're gonna kind of do it in layers. 
So I'm going to add some of the non-dairy creamer. And then we're going to add a good amount of the glow-in-the-dark glitter, the champagne glitter, and the black glitter. And then we're going to continue to add more of the creamer and continue until it is filled to our desired height. Okay, so once we have everything layered, I'm then going to use my little stirring stick here or a spoon, anything like that, and we're just going to get it all mixed up so that it all looks cohesive and even. And for this one, since it's got a really good seal, I think I'm also going to shake it up and see where we get from there, and then I might do some additional stirring then after that. And as you can see, after shaking it up, we actually got a really great cohesive look that's just kind of got a little bit more dimension and has some of the glittery shine to it. But we can definitely add some more now that we have shaken this up. So I'm going to add some more of the creamer. Okay, so we've got our glittery midnight dust here, and I feel like that's a good level now. So we're now going to take our label. And again, I like to print my labels on sticker paper. And then go around the outside edge with a matching marker. Okay, and I think that looks pretty straight. Okay, so I think I want to add some of this leather cording under here, right under where the top of the jar actually closes. So I'm going to use my hot glue gun, and we're going to add a drop of the hot glue there. We're going to run it all the way around, and then we're going to put another drop to hold it down. And then I think I'm going to put a black cord right underneath of it. And again, this is not sponsored, but one thing I really like about this Gorilla Glue hot glue gun is that it has this light that turns on when it's on, which I think is helpful because then it's just one other little precaution to help you not leave your hot glue gun plugged in. The other cool thing is it has both dual temperatures on here. So you can do the low setting or the high heat just depending on what you're doing and what kind of stick is in here. So um, I do really like that. I also like that this handle is so much longer. So you actually can use your whole hand because on some hot glue guns, it's so tiny, and after a while, your finger wants to fall off. So I actually really like that this is a bigger handle to be able to hold on to it. Okay, so we are going to take our Gorilla Glue hot glue gun and glue here. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit here. on the end. Now again, the really nice part about this one is it gives you a solid 45 seconds to work with it. So if you need to move it or adjust it or anything like that, it gives you plenty of time to do that. So I'm going to stick this to my glass. Now as a lot of you will know, hot glue and glass don't always go along. That's why I tell you to use your hot glue on glass if you want to remove it. But I will say the hot glue the Gorilla Glue hot glue does pretty darn decent and doesn't pull off super easy. So I'm just going to string this all the way around. And then we're going to cut this. And then again, I'm going to take the hot glue and just put a little bit here on the glass as well as on the end of the first wrap we did. 
and then I'm going to do the black cording right underneath the tan. And for this one, I'm going to knot it and then I'm going to glue that knot into place so that it can't just swivel to the front. And to keep this from popping up, I'm going to add a couple little drops of glue periodically behind the leather cording. Okay, so now that I have both of the cordings on here, I think it just adds a little something to draw in the color of the bag and kind of give a little bit of a nod to that original Midnight Society Midnight Dust. And I'm going to do the same thing for this container. Okay, so now that I have both of my Midnight Dusts complete, we're going to go ahead and move on to making our bag. Okay, so the beautiful thing about doing this bag with hot glue is that it's super forgiving, so you don't have to be crazy exact. Now, like I said, you could easily hand stitch this. You could definitely sew this with a sewing machine. You just wanna make sure you have the right needle, but I wanted to give you an option in case you don't have a sewing machine. So we're gonna be flipping this bag inside out to make sure that the seams are actually on the inside and it gives a nice clean edge. So to do that, we're going to put the two nice pieces of the leather together and like I said this is a faux leather so the back is like a regular canvasy fabric. I actually found this on the really big rolls of pleather or faux leather um, that you can find in the like upholstery aisle of Hobby Lobby but any leather or pleather will work just fine. Before we glue these seams down I'm actually going to glue my seams here so to do that I'm going to glue this down and I'm going to glue this down so then that way we will have nice clean edge on the top of our bag. So I'm just going to take my Gorilla Glue glue And then we're flipping it over and we're going to press really good. And again, the beautiful part about this glue is you have 45 seconds of work time to get it exactly where you want it, get it all smoothed down the way you'd like, and make sure that it gives you a nice good seal with that glue. And then we have our nice finished edge. So we're going to do the same thing for this side. Okay, so now that I have both of my finished edges, I have my leather together. And we are going to glue the two leather sides to itself to create a seam this way. And then once we do that, we're going to fold it over and do another glue seam here so that we're getting the canvas gluing to itself. And we're also going to kind of at run a bead along the edge to just seal everything in really, really good. Okay, so this is nice and glued down. And now we're going to run another bead here. And we're going to fold this whole seam over.
and that stuck down good. Now, like I said, I'm going to then take my glue and especially up here where it's thicker because we created those seams, we just want to make sure we really lock everything in nicely. So be careful. Don't burn yourself. But you really want to just kind of push this down and hold this until that fully cures to make sure you get a good seam edge. And then for the rest of this, we're going to run the bead, a pretty thick bead here. You don't see it on the other side of the bag when we're done. But we're going to run the bead right along the very edge to just kind of seal that edge down to the other part of the bag. So it won't leave any gaps so that if we put our midnight dust in the bag, it's not going to leak because everything will be good and sealed. Okay, so that side looks good. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so once we get all of this glued, I like to leave it sit for a good five minutes just to make sure it's nice and cool and everything has completely set and cured. Okay, so now that everything is cool and good, we are going to carefully flip our bag inside out. Now, obviously, if we had sewn this, you wouldn't have to flip this so carefully, but I just want to make sure that on our newly created seams that we don't create any openings that aren't necessary. So just carefully flip the bag inside out. Okay, so as you can see, everything looks pretty good. The only thing we got was a little bit of separation up here on both sides. And a lot of that just has to do with how thick this is. So at this point, what I like to do is add just a little bit more glue and you want to make sure you go in close because if it seeps out, you don't want it to come past the pleather. And then I'm actually going to take a book and set it on top of it so that it can cool that way to make sure that we get really good adhesion. And then we're going to let that cool for a couple minutes. Okay, so after I put the books on there and it cooled, we have our bag all ready for our midnight dust. Now, the only thing we have to add is our little rivets. So to add rivets, we use a rivet tool. And you can find this tool in the sewing aisles as well as the leather craft aisles of pretty much any craft or sewing store. So basically what we do is figure out where we're going to put our eyelets. And we're going to trace the circle, cut that out. If you have a hole punch that's the same size as the middle of this, bonus. And then all you do is place this in here and this here. And you basically just hammer this down. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do one um, out in my garage because it is recommended that you use a concrete floor to um, pound those on just to make sure you get a really good crimp on your eyelets. Okay so for this I thought I filmed the first part and I didn't. You just take your rivet and size it up where you want it to go. Draw the little circle, cut that out, and then you take your rivet and you push it through the hole like this and then you take the other side of your rivet because it comes in a set and you place it over top of it like this and then we're going to place then we're going to take the front side here and put it down on the base and we're going to take this piece and hold it here and then on concrete we're going to hammer it
as you can see, we get our completed rivet. So I'm gonna finish these up. And just like that, we have our rivets in our bag. Okay, so as you can see, we have our rivets. They're completely in place. And I have my cording and I have taken some tape and wrapped it around the end of the cording just so it's easier to feed through. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is string our cord from the back to our front holes here, okay? And then you wanna make sure they're pretty even. Once you do that, we're gonna go around the outside edge into the back and then we're also going to come out the front and we're going to do the same thing over here around the side through the back out through the front And then you wanna pull these up together so you have about the same amount of string on both sides. Okay, so once everything is tight, we will be able to cinch this up and loosen it out. So to do this, we're gonna make this kind of a slip knot situation. So we're going to take the right side here. I'm gonna pull it all the way over to this right rivet and then we're going to go around our string on the left essentially four times okay so now that we have our four loops we're going to take the same string and go up to the very top of our loops and we're going to string it behind so if you need to do it one at a time, but just string it through those wraps we made around the initial cord. Okay. So then all we have to do to tighten our bag is pull this one and everything will get cinched. And then we just open it up by pulling it open. So then that way that gives us a easy way to pull our drawstring. Okay, then I'm going to trim my ends because their ends weren't crazy long. So we're going to trim the ends and I'm just going to knot these off. And with the type of cording I have, the end will unfray and I don't care. I think that's fine. It just kind of adds to the characteristic of the bag. So now we have our midnight dust pouch ready to put some midnight dust in. And once our bag is complete, there you have it, our midnight dust just like they used in Are You Afraid of the Dark? I thought this would be a really fun prop to make, especially considering they came out with a second reboot this year with Are You Afraid of the Dark Ghost Island. I know they came out with the one in 2019 that I had something to do with the shadows, and then they had the original that I used to watch when I was a kid, and I loved that show. It used to scare me in the best way possible. So I thought it would be super fun to bring back a little nostalgia, but at the same time give a nod to the original since the new one came out this year. So this would be a fun addition to have for a cosplay or something to have by a campfire and definitely something awesome to have for Halloween. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much. And with that, I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. 